Impact Sci-Tai Tech. In a previous video, I showed you an extraction of a 556 timer from a mosquito repellent device, and I showed you how to make a dual punk console on a breadboard. And this right here is the schematic to make the dual punk console. Here we go, let's have a listen. what this sounds like so far. Now let's complete the project by putting it on a perf board. Let's get started. These are the items you're going to need to make for this project. You're going to need a 9 volt battery, 9 volt battery connector, a 14 pin IC socket holder, and of course a 556 timer which will be the brains for this whole circuit. The other items you're going to need is this slide switch. You're going to need these knobs which will connect to these 1 mega ohm potentiometers. You're also going to need these 104 nanofarad ceramic capacitors and a 220 ohm resistor, a 3.3 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and a 2 watt 8 ohm speaker. And of course, a perf board. Now let's go ahead and assemble this circuit together, and let's get started. You're going to need to place your IC socket holder in the center of your perf board, just like this. Wrap it with a rubber band so it's flush with the board, so that way you can solder the pins in place. Solder the rest of the pins in, just like this, and it should look just like that. Next, you're going to need to put your 220 ohm resistor, and you're going to need to connect it to pin 1 and 6 just like that. Bend the leads over and then solder bridge it together. Cut off the leads and there it should look like that. Next you're going to need the 104 nanofarad ceramic capacitor and that's going to go and connect to pin 6 and 7 just like that. Bend over the leads and solder bridge it together. Cut off the leads and it should look just like this. Next, you're gonna to need to take your 3.3 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and you're gonna connect the negative to pin 10. And it should look just like this, and bend the leads over to solder bridge it. Solder it in place, just like that. Next, you're gonna take your 104 nanofarad capacitor and connect that to pin 12. Bend the lead over, solder bridge it, and solder it into place. And it should look just like that. And next, you're going to need to solder pin 12 and 13 together. Just like that. Next, you're going to need to take your 9 volt battery connector, and you're going to need to solder your positive and negative into place. You're going to need to solder the positive to pin 14, and solder the negative to pin 7. Place your negative wire just like that, bend over the lead, and solder it into place. Then you're going to take your positive and solder it to your switch. And then solder another positive wire to the center part of the switch and then take your positive wire from the switch and solder it to pin 14, just like that. Next, you need a bridge wire and solder it to pin 2, and bridge the wire over and solder it to pin 6. And there you have it, pin 2 and 6 are now bridged together. Next, you're going to take another bridge wire and solder pin 5. And connect pin 5 to pin 8.
And there you have it, pin five and eight are connected. Next, you take another bridge wire and solder pin 10 and bridge it to pin 14. And there you have it, pin 10 and 14 are bridged together. Next, you're going to need to take a negative wire, solder it to pin 7, and then solder it to the negative portion of the ceramic capacitor, which is on pin 12. And there you have it, pin 7, and the capacitor is now grounded. And it should look just like this. Next, you're going to need to connect your potentiometers into place. Connect them just like that on both ends. and then solder them into place. Next, you take a positive wire and solder to one of the pins of your potentiometer, and then solder that to pin 14. And now take another positive wire, solder it to pin 14, and solder that to one of the pins of the potentiometer. It could either be the left pin or right pin of the potentiometer, it doesn't matter, as long as it's not the center. Now the next step is to connect the speaker to the circuit. Take the positive wire from the speaker and solder it to the positive pin of the electrolytic capacitor. And then you take your negative wire from your speaker and connect that to pin nine. Solder it into place and bridge it to pin 9, just like that. There's a chance you may not have this problem, but for me, the speaker wire was too thick to fit through the hole, so I had to add an extra wire. Next, you're going to take your 556 timer and connect it to your circuit. Perfect. Now it's time to test it out. Hey, wait a minute, it doesn't work. I forgot to connect the center pin of the potentiometer and connect that to pin 1. There we go, that potentiometer is now connected to the circuit. Next, I'm going to take the pin 12 and 13 and solder that to the center pin of the other potentiometer. There, now it's going to work. And these are the pieces of cardboard that you're going to need to build the housing. First, I'm going to go and unplug these pins that are on the speaker, and then cut the wires, and then re-solder them directly to the speaker. The reason for doing that makes it more compact. Now re-solder them into place. There we go, now it's more compact. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some hot glue onto these leads of the speaker to prevent any short circuits. And now I'm going to place a piece of cardboard underneath the perf board to prevent any kind of short circuits. Put some hot glue on the speaker and then connect the whole thing to the speaker, just like this. And it should look just like that. Next, I'm going to take this bottom piece and glue it to the bottom part of the speaker. And it should look just like this. Next, I have these side pieces, which I'm going to glue and measure and place just like this. And I'm going to go and mark where the potentiometer is. So then that way, I can make a hole in the cardboard to be able to place the potentiometer through. I'm going to take my screwdriver and make a hole right in the center of where I marked. I'm 
and it should look just like this. Now I made the hole a little bit bigger by using a pen that's a little wider. And now it should be able to connect just like this. Perfect. Now it's time to glue everything into place. Put some hot glue on this edge and this edge and glue on the side piece just like that. And then repeat the same process with the other side. And there you go, it should look just like this. Now it's time to connect these knobs. And I'm going to go put my finger behind the potentiometer and push the knob just like that to prevent the potentiometer from breaking or bending. It should look just like that. And now it's time to connect the back panel to this device. Put some hot glue on these edges. And glue it into place just like that. I'm going to go and take my switch. And I've already made a mark right here. And I'm going to cut out a little rectangle to put the switch into. Push the switch through, and it should look just like that. Put a little bit of hot glue to glue the switch into place. Wiggle the switch back and forth while the glue is hardening so the switch doesn't stick. Next, we're going to need to take this piece of cardboard, which will be the housing for the battery. Put some hot glue on it, and then glue it into place. Now take your 9 volt battery connection, connect it on that corner, and glue those corners together. Glue those corners together inside, so then that way they have the entire housing connected. Connect your 9 volt battery, and push it through. And I'm going to cut off this piece, because this piece I realize isn't necessary. Right off, and then on, so that way I know which is on and off for the switch. And now I'm going to go make a hole on this side of the battery connection, just so that way I can be able to push the battery in and out. So doing that, we'll push the battery out, so that way I can be able to change the battery. Now, put some glue to hold the wire down into place and to glue those edges properly, so that way the back panel will stay attached. Put some more hot glue on the top part, and put the top panel on, just like that. And now for the speaker part. I made a circle that's measured the size of the in inner part of the speaker, and I'm going to cut out a perfect circle, so that way the speaker can be able to make it sound. Place it over, just like this. And now I'm going to go ahead and glue these edges to glue the front panel on. There we go, just like that. And there you have it. The dual punk console is now complete. As you can see, I used cardboard to make as a housing. And I've cut out a hole here so that way you can see the speaker and the speaker can be able to make it sound better. I attach the knobs on both sides so you can be able to hold on to the potentiometers a little better. I have the power supply which is the battery that's just connected right here. A little hole here which you can take a screwdriver like you would normally do for any kind of toy or device to unscrew. In this case is to stick the screwdriver through this hole and push the battery out. I made this purposely small enough so it can hold the battery snug so that it doesn't fall out as you can see. And then right here, I have the on and off switch on. Uh, this is off, and now it's on. And now, let's go ahead and do a little demonstration and see how this sounds. Go ahead and switch on. And I can turn these knobs, and I'll make funny sounds.
And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own dual punk console with using just a few simple components and using the 556 timer, which is the main component that controls this circuit. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTai Tech. I hope you learned something new. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTai Tech videos. Till the next tech. Goodbye.